after months of hedging, OpenAI has finally admitted to actively training GPT-5. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. Today, we kick off with a couple of stories around OpenAI. Big surprise, that's basically been the kickoff of every episode for the last week or so. But where we start is with a really interesting interview between Sam Altman, who is, of course, the CEO of OpenAI, and the Financial Times. There are a few things in here which, although seemingly innocuous at first, actually I think have pretty big implications. The first, and what the FT chose to focus on, was the intimation that OpenAI would be raising even more money from their partners at Microsoft. From the interview, Altman said his company's partnership with Microsoft's chief executive Satya Nadella was working really well, and that he expected to, quote, raise a lot more over time from the tech giant, among other investors, to keep up with the punishing costs of building more sophisticated AI models. Specifically, when asked if Microsoft would keep investing further in OpenAI, Altman said, I'd hope so. There's a long way to go and a lot of compute to build out between here and AGI. Training expenses are just huge. Indeed, Altman also pointed out that although the company is over a billion dollar revenue run rate at this point, they're still unprofitable because of how high those training costs are. Altman said that the Microsoft partnership would ensure that, quote, we both make money on each other's success and everybody is happy. Now, another interesting part of this conversation, although not particularly unexpected if you listen to Sam Altman talk with any sort of frequency, is the way that he describes what OpenAI's real products are. He said, right now, people say you have this research lab, you have this API software, you have the partnership with Microsoft, you have this ChatGPT thing, now there is a GPT store. But those aren't really our products. Those are channels into our one single product, which is intelligence, magic intelligence in the sky. I think that's what we're about. Indeed, Altman said that his specific time is split into one, research into how to build super intelligence, and two, how to get the computing resources to do so. Still, one of the most significant revelations from the interview is something which perhaps was widely expected, but represents a significant shift in the tone from OpenAI, which is that the company has confirmed that it's working on GPT-5. Now, the reason that this is notable is that in all previous interviews when asked about this, Altman went out of his way to say that we are not training GPT-5 yet. And while he still didn't commit to any sort of timeline for release, he did talk about it in more than passing detail. Indeed, it sounds like the interviewer, although we can't be sure because we only have these excerpts, not the actual interview, delved into it with Altman, who even got into where the data would be coming from. On the one hand, it is going to be publicly available data sets, but on the other hand, it's going to be proprietary data from companies that they partner with. This, of course, gets to what we talked about last week with OpenAI's new data partnership initiative, which is clearly an attempt to go out and proactively recruit data that they didn't have access to previously. Allman also talked about how hard it was to predict exactly how GPT-5 will be better than its predecessors, even though they can have pretty strong confidence that it will be better than those predecessors. Altman said, Until we go train that model, it's like a fun guessing game for us. We're trying to get better at it because I think it's important from a safety perspective to predict the capabilities, but I can't tell you here's exactly what it's going to do that GPT-4 didn't. Altman also discussed that there would be more to getting AGI than just training better and better LLMs. He called them, quote, one of the core pieces for how to build AGI, but there will be a lot of other pieces on top of it. However, what that other pieces are, he's not really sure. He used an analogy of Isaac Newton, saying basically that he couldn't just read more textbooks and talk to more professors. He had to get out there and actually do things. However, what those things are, when it comes to the context of AGI, Altman just isn't sure. He said, so the question is, what is the missing idea to go generate new knowledge for humanity? I think that's the biggest thing to go work on. Now, in the meantime, for those who are a little bit more focused on the here and now and the new launch of GPTs, this interview reaffirms that they are very much focused on these as the first step towards more complex and more capable agents. Said Altman, we will make these agents more and more powerful, and the actions will get more and more complex from here. The amount of business value that will come from being able to do that in every category, I think, is pretty good. Now, as I mentioned, a lot of people are noting the fact that this $10 billion wasn't enough to compete in this incredibly expensive industry. Well, part of that is not just the computing costs of training ever more advanced models, but also the salary costs of the team members that they are trying to recruit. The information dropped a piece over the weekend. OpenAI's new weapon in talent war with Google? $10 million pay packages for researchers. Now, basically what's happening here is that there is this interesting little window where OpenAI is on the verge of effectively tripling the valuation of the company with this employee tender offer that we've talked about in the past. Effectively, OpenAI is giving some of its employees the ability to get liquidity, and they're doing so at a price tag that's between $80 and $90 billion. A 
Apparently then, OpenAI's recruiters are taking that fact and bringing it to top AI employees at other companies like Google and basically saying, lock in a stock package now at the current valuation of $27 billion from earlier this year, and almost immediately it'll be worth 3x what it is on paper. Now, in addition to those big juicy pay packages, the recruiters are also making claims that researchers would have greater access to compute. However, exactly what that's based on isn't clear, given that there is still a perception that Google has an advantage in that area, even if Sam Altman has told some colleagues that he expects that advantage to shrink next year as Microsoft makes more chips available to OpenAI. Now, while it doesn't sound like Google is trying to match these salary offers currently, they have clearly increased their willingness to compete on that vector, given that the flow hasn't just been from Google to OpenAI, but that Google has been successfully recruiting some OpenAI employees, such as the person who led the development of Code Interpreter, who joined Google from OpenAI in October. Now, speaking of compute, while NVIDIA's H100 has set the tone and tenor for this latest generation of generative AI, today they unveiled the H200. The H200, as you might expect, is meant to be a GPU upgrade from the H100. CNBC writes, The key improvement with the H200 is that it includes 141 gigabytes of next-generation HBM3 memory that will help the chip perform inference, or using a large model after it's trained to generate text, image, or predictions. NVIDIA said that the H200 will generate output nearly twice as fast as the H100. Now, interestingly, this is the same focus that AMD's new MI300X chip is supposed to have, a real focus on inference, and both are expected to come sometime in the first half of 2024. Now, back in the land of Google, Reuters is reporting that the company is in talks to invest in very hot AI startup Character AI. Character AI, which was founded by ex-Googlers, gives people, particularly young people, the ability to chat with virtual celebrities, anime characters, or create their own chatbots. According to SimilarWeb, 60% of Character AI's traffic is between 18 and 24. As Reuters puts it, the demographic is helping the company position itself as the purveyor of more fun personal AI companions compared to other AI chatbots from OpenAI's ChatGPT and Google's Bard. The company is apparently looking for a big valuation increase from back in March when it raised $150 million at a billion-dollar valuation. Character AI is now apparently looking to raise funding at around a $5 billion valuation. Last up today, from the science and AI file, Space.com is reporting about a new AI that can track the melting of icebergs 10,000 times faster than can humans. Right, Space, scientists are turning to artificial intelligence to quickly spot giant icebergs and satellite images with the goal of monitoring their shrinkage over time. And unlike the conventional iceberg tracking approach, which takes a human a few minutes to outline just one of these structures in an image, AI accomplished the same task in less than 0.01 seconds. Basically, the team in question trained AI to spot large icebergs using images from the European Space Agency's Sentinel-1 satellite, and it did so with not only accuracy, but also with fewer mistakes. Again, from space, the AI tool didn't make the same mistakes as other more conventional automated approaches, such as the error of misconstruing individual bits of ice as one collective iceberg. And of course, basically with the observation taken out of the hands of individual scientists, there's more time to spend focusing on actual solutions. Anyways, guys, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Next up, the main AI Breakdown.